Hello beautiful humans and welcome back to another video. My name is Lily aka Lily Koi. So when I was healing from hypothyroid and hypoglycemia and adrenal fatigue and polycystic ovarian syndrome and just a slew of other hormone nightmare messes, one of the most important things that I had to figure out was how much dietary fat to eat to support that healing process. And given that it's been almost a decade since I started that process, I've had a lot of experience, I have gathered a lot of information, and when I went on Instagram and asked you guys what questions you needed answered, one of the most common responses was, Lily, how much fat should I eat? What's healthiest? What's good for my hormones? What's good for nutrient absorption? What do you eat? How do I even know how much fat I'm eating? And all of the confusion is really understandable because there are people preaching with all of their hearts for every end of this fat consumption spectrum from 5% of calories to 90% of calories, and it just gets plain confusing. So when we're approaching this subject, I feel like the most important thing we can do is stick with what does the science tell us? Though unfortunately, when you get into the intricacies of the exact fat percentage that you should be eating, the science is um, not very specific. So when we're talking about who's right and who has the data on their side, the fact is, is that we don't have a lot of the data that we would need to be able to say that someone is exactly right. So we can start off by asking what do some of the largest health-oriented organizations recommend? So most of those organizations are in agreement that on the lower end we should be eating about 15% of our calories from fat, and at the higher end we're looking at about 35% of our calories from fat. Though I do think it's important to keep in mind that these are not, you know, plant-based organizations, and these organizations are not looking to completely eliminate chronic disease they're just looking to you know like manage it and everything in moderation and keep as many people happy as possible and by happy I think they mean that they still let them eat fried chicken sometimes so some of the most useful information that science has to offer us on this subject are epidemiological studies where we look at whole populations of people and look at their overall health. Now epidemiological studies, they're not perfect, they have some shortcomings and some inherent flaws that you just can't get by, but that doesn't mean that they don't have really useful information included in them. So some of the studies that have been the most useful have been the ones looking at the blue zones or the areas of the world where we have exceptionally long-lived people who are in, generally speaking, better than average health. So when you look at these blue zone areas, you can look at places like Okinawa, Japan, where the amount of fat that they eat is very low, usually between 10 and 15 percent of their calories. And then you can also look at other blue zones in areas such as the Mediterranean, where they're eating closer to 35 percent of their calories from fat. Both of these populations, they're very long lived and healthy despite having fairly different fat percentages. So instead of picking apart who's more healthy, I think what's more important is to come back to what do they have in common, and that's that their diets are based on whole plant foods. And that's a theme that I want you guys to remember throughout this video. It's not necessarily about getting your macronutrient ratios to a specific place and then making sure that they stay there every day and that will be what works for you and heals all of your problems. What I think is a lot wiser, calling on my now decade of personal experience doing this and using my 2020 hindsight, what's a lot wiser is just focusing on eating nutrients nutrient-dense whole plant foods to the largest extent possible. Now if you look at doctors and organizations who are specifically looking at healing chronic, degenerative, usually deadly diseases such as heart disease, diabetes, kidney disease, liver disease, cancers, etc. If you look at those doctors and organizations that are involved in actively reversing those diseases, oftentimes you see that they recommend a lower fat percentage of no more than 10% of their patient's calories coming from fat. And these protocols are generally speaking extremely effective. 
So looking at that information, I think it's important to take away that if you're healing from a chronic disease or you have a disease that is very likely going to be deadly to you, like heart disease, it could be very wise for you to opt for a lower fat diet, at least for a period of time. That was definitely my experience. When I was first diagnosed with hypothyroid, I was told to go on a high fat and high protein diet so that I could heal my hypothyroid and manage my hypoglycemia and my blood sugar and my insulin and the problem was the carbohydrates and that it was so bad and terrible and I should eat plenty of fat. And so that's what I was doing. I was eating lots of nuts and seeds. I included animal products in my diet because I was told that that was healthiest. I was eating coconut oil because I was told that that would heal my thyroid. And I was doing everything, you know, right. And I just kept getting worse. Then I switched to a plant-based diet and I went very low fat. I actually ate about 5% of my calories from fat for a couple of few months and I felt great because I was recovering from chronic diseases and illnesses. My hypothyroid began to recover and it really felt like my body was cleaning itself out, so to speak. But after a few months of that, I definitely wanted to include more fat in my diet, and I did. And for the next several years of that healing process, I ate about 10% of my calories from fat, and I felt good. I felt really good. I noticed that if I went off of that dietary pattern, say, you know, I indulged and I had some tortilla chips or I ate some, you know, plant-based ice cream that was pretty high in fat, I would definitely notice it. I noticed that if I had too much fat the next day, I'd feel sluggish. My blood sugar control wouldn't be as good. But as time went by and my body continued healing, it has become much more resilient to a higher amount of fat. And currently I'm eating around 15% of my calories from fat. It might be a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending on the day, but this is where I'm feeling really good now. And I feel like this is a sustainable place for me to be because I'm getting all of my essential fatty acids and being really wise about my omega three to six ratio. I'm supplementing with some vegan algae based DHA slash EPA just to make sure that all of my fatty acid bases are covered. About 15% of your calories from fat, if you remember, it is about the lowest recommended range by the World Health Organization and some other larger health-based organizations. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable, wise place to be for a healthy human being who's not in the process of reversing any chronic or dangerous diseases. It's a great place to be, like I said, for essential fatty acid balance. It's a great place to be for nutrient absorption, for satiety, for brain health and eye health and body-wide health. <laughs> However, you know, I acknowledge that my experience is anecdotal evidence. And unfortunately, there haven't been any studies yet, maybe one day, where we compare like a higher fat vegan diet to a lower fat vegan diet, or ideally a higher fat whole food plant-based vegan diet to a lower fat whole food plant-based diet. You know, those haven't been compared, so we don't have any scientific data in order to tease out if one of those is in fact healthier or provides some sort of health benefit. You know, there are a lot of people like me who provide anecdotal evidence that they feel better on a higher fat diet. And while that certainly was not my experience, I won't deny their reality any more than I will deny my own. What I will say is that whether or not you choose to do a higher fat whole food plant-based diet or a lower fat whole food plant-based diet, what's most important is nutrient density and sticking to whole foods as much as possible. I am definitely of the opinion that refined foods don't need to be staple foods in our diet. So that would include oils, which are by definition a refined food. And so simply by eliminating oils and processed foods that contain oils, my dietary fat percentage naturally lowers significantly. Sticking to my priority of nutrient density, I noticed that a lot of higher fat foods like raw, unprocessed, unsalted nuts and seeds are very high in necessary micronutrients. 
And so I think those are a very important, vital part of a healthy, well-rounded, whole plant food diet, even though eating them on a regular basis does bump up the percentage of fat a little bit. The super healthy fats in those types of foods also increases the overall nutrient absorption of my diet. So again, if I'm prioritizing nutrient density and nutrient absorption, my dietary fat percentage is gonna go up a little bit, and that's fine. I know a lot of you guys are here on this channel because you're interested in losing weight or you're in the process of going through your weight loss journey and so you are understandably worried about the effect that dietary fat could have on your weight loss. I know that there are a few plant-based diet gurus out there who recommend what I would categorize as extremely low fat diets. And they recommend that if you hit a weight loss plateau, that what you should do is just take out even more fat from your diet, even though a lot of their followers are already eating 10% or sometimes even 5% of their calories from fat. And I feel that that recommendation is misguided. I think it's evidence of not having a good holistic picture of nutrition. I think that it is probably setting their followers up for long-term nutrient deficiencies, including deficiencies in micronutrients and or essential fatty acids. And those types of nutrient deficiencies can certainly contribute to weight loss plateaus or weight gain, as well as overall ill health. So again, I will return to the recommendation even if you're in the process of trying to lose weight, to focus on a nutrient-dense diet instead of getting hyper-fixated on fat percentages. Another really common question that I got on Instagram was how do I even know how much fat I'm eating? I know it can be an unfamiliar concept to talk about the food that you eat in terms of percentage of your calories from certain macronutrients. You know, just like give me a number of grams or like half an avocado or whatever. Unfortunately or otherwise, it's completely personal to you. So what I would recommend you do is go to a site like chronometer.com or some other calorie tracking app and just keep track of what you're eating for a few days. Certainly tracking your calories or your macronutrient ratios is something that can drive a human being crazy really fast, so I don't wish that upon anyone. However, these types of websites or apps can be really useful for just seeing where you naturally fall on the fat percentage spectrum of keeping track of how you feel in comparison to what you eat, noticing if there are days when you indulged in more fat, if then the next day your blood sugar feels a little bit more wonky or your energy is a little bit lower or what. These websites and apps can also be wonderful for focusing on nutrient dense foods because you do get a bit of a buzz when you put in like that you ate a cup of kale and then you see those micronutrient minerals just bang getting close to 100%. And so if you use these tools to focus more on nutrient density instead of obsessing over calories or macronutrient ratios, I think your health will be much better served. In terms of hormonal issues, there is a lot of scientific research out there that shows us very clearly that the more dietary fat you eat, the higher your sex hormones go. And the higher your sex hormones go, the more issues you're gonna have like PMS, increased risk for breast, ovarian, prostate cancers, other hormonally sensitive cancers, going to have more issues like acne, and potentially more problems with things like polycystic ovarian syndrome. And if you have PCOS, you probably know how important insulin regulation is for that disease, as well as issues like diabetes. And there are also several studies that show that the higher your dietary fat intake, the less sensitive to insulin you are. So if you are dealing with an issue like this and you decide to go on a lower fat diet, even as low as five to 10% of your calories from fat, you can totally do that for a time. It's not like you're gonna wake up tomorrow and be deficient in essential fatty acids. Your body is quite good at storing fatty acids and especially if you're overweight, you are actually covered in fatty acids, okay? 
So I hope this video has helped to clear up some of the questions that you might have about exactly how much fat you're supposed to be eating. I know the answer was probably a little bit more ambiguous than you were hoping for, but again, if we can shift the focus from obsessing about macronutrient ratios and instead switching to focusing on nutrient dense whole plant foods and seeing where we feel best as far as eating fat from nutrient-dense whole plant foods, our health and well-being and success on a vegan or plant-based diet will be much higher in the long run. As always, questions go down in the comments section below. I spend a lot of time in the comments, so don't be afraid to ask. Make sure you are following me on Instagram. The link is also down below. And as always, make better choices for yourself. No one's going to do it for you. And take really, really good care. I will see you so very soon. Bye!